Hello, welcome to another reading vlog. I know I told you guys that this reading vlog or the next reading vlog that I'll put up after my first one for the Wallflower series would be better, better quality. No, it's not. It's just, it's just low quality, chaotic reading vlog where I'm going to update you in clips. I can already foresee that I will do weird stagnant clips of things. I won't probably have too many B-rolls, so it's just be me just updating you on my random thoughts. Think of it like Instagram stories that you don't want to watch. Anyways, um, I know I said like I don't want to read Devil in Winter, and I wanted to just like read a Karen Hawkins novel, aka this one right here, which is called Her Master and Commander, and it's a pirate novel. I'm excited for it, but the thing is, is that Devil in Winter has me by the throat right now like I really just want to read Devil in Winter so what did I do I started the audiobook I don't care I started it I'm like 50 minutes in I'm deep guys like it's just something that I knew I would really like and I would really love I read this six years ago no not six years ago eight years ago now in 2015 it starts off really quickly so we have our heroine who is in deep trouble because she needs to marry quick because somebody's trying to steal her fortune so for her to get married, her husband can at least protect her. So she finds like the nastiest person ever to marry that she can trust. Very, very importantly. And this person just so happens to be like a villain. So now it's kind of like up to Lisa Claypas to kind of convince us to fall in love with the villain. But so far, winning me over. And we know we love a morally gray hero who has to do crimes that he doesn't want to commit but he does it anyways to save himself so our hero is destitute he needs to marry so when this like beautiful young woman comes to his house and is like you know what i'll give you my dowry if you can protect me it'll be good and he said you know what that sounds like a crazy ass plan and we'll do it so they end up getting married they end up having one night of passion and she's like, I don't want to risk my heart for you. So we're only going to do it one night. And then he is insatiable. Like he is just like completely gripped by her. And this is the stuff that gets me. It just gets me so good. Hello. Hi. Welcome. This is day two of the reading vlog. It is Tuesday. I just finished work. So if work is seeing this, I finished work and now I'm playing. Um, basically today was a really rough day at work. I don't know. You know, it's not that rough. It was just back-to-back -back meetings, a lot of webinars that I had to sit through, but then a lot of also like work that I had to do. Yeah, people are still messaging me and it's like 5.40 p.m. But I'm gonna go for my standard walk after work and I'm just gonna think about life, decompress, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna build out a presentation deck for tomorrow's call with my client. Um, nothing really happened today. I didn't listen to Devil in Winter because I really wanted to savor the moment and I felt like because my meetings were kind of like all over the place throughout the day, it would have messed with the flow of the book and I am, I have like an hour left of the audiobook, but like that's saying not a lot because I'm listening at 3.5 times the speed. So I feel like I'm like around maybe like 60% into the book. Obviously I love it. It's totally different from all the other books that I've read so far in the series. It starts off with a bang, you know, like they're together very earlier on and she is resisting temptation. Meanwhile, he is temptation. I literally just finished work. It's 9.30, so I logged on a little bit after dinner. Did a lot of work, 
had to clean up a lot of stuff. It was just an extra two and a half hours of stuff that I had to put in, but it's okay. It's okay. It just means that I have an easier morning tomorrow in the office, so it's fine. We're gonna look on the bright side. I don't know if I want to continue reading Devil in Winter now that I'm brain dead, because I feel like I'm still not giving it my all, you know what I'm saying? I have around 50 minutes left of the audiobook, so not much of an update for you guys, except for I really like the friendship in this romance. Like, obviously, that's like the whole point of this quartet, is that it's four best friends, and it's so cute when they're all hanging out, and they're having fun, and then the husbands are just watching them going like, are you okay? Like, why are you guys like each other so much? This is the face of someone who just finished Devil in Winter by Lisa Klebes. By the way, this is my reading chair. I know you guys can't see too much of it, but I never shot any of it in any of my videos because it's in a weird location in my house. It's not even in my room. It's just downstairs in a common living room and I don't feel comfortable filming in front of people. But since right now it is 11 o'clock p.m. nobody's downstairs anymore and it's just me chilling and I finished Devil in Winter like I mentioned. It was so good. It was so good. But there were some parts of it where I felt like it felt a little bit rushed. But I think it was just the audiobook. Like honestly like I feel like if I picked up the book and I read it myself physically it would have been perfect pacing, perfect timing and everything. So we basically got to the part where this villain in this book just never dies. Like if you guys read this book, and I'm sure most of you guys already did, like, you guys would agree with me that the villain in Devil in Winter just never dies. Like, they keep coming back and causing all this ruckus. They keep causing trouble, and they won't let our babies, like, just be happily ever after. Like, they have to come and cause all this, like, mess in this scene and hurt people that we really like and we really care about. Like, come on. Um, so yeah, that was a really great book. I gave it, I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 5. I'm gonna keep the 5 out of 5 rating from 8 years ago because it's just, it's just good. It deserves it. But we also got like a really nice snippet of like Daisy's romance, which is like the last book in the series, which is called Scandal in Spring, which is something obviously I'm gonna start reading very soon. I think I'm gonna like listen to the audiobook tomorrow on my way to work and then maybe I can bring like the physical copy with me too so that I can concentrate and focus more. Now I'm excited for Daisy's book but I just posted my reading vlog part one of the series and somebody commented that they DNF Scandal in Spring and that this was their like least favorite book of the quartet. Shocking strange really strange for me i don't know how i feel about that and then other people commented and said that they loved secrets of the summer night and that made me think like okay i think it's just like me listening to the audiobook too quickly and then i was like actually considering like should i reread secrets of a summer night just so i could give it a fair reading Hello! It's been such a long time since I last updated you guys on this reading vlog, but it is Friday, so it has been two days. Wednesday and Thursday were pretty rough, and I didn't vlog much because I was actually in the office, so I don't like to do anything after work when I'm in the office. I'm already exhausted from like talking to everybody in the office and running around doing things. Um, but it was extremely busy this week because I had all these deadlines to hit, and then I was actually just really like blocked up with a lot of client calls and just discussing things and even just internal calls I had a bunch of those which took up a lot of my time which meant that I had to work really late on some days to make sure that I had all my prep work done ahead of these calls too as well so it was a lot um I didn't really have much time to read more of Scandal and Spring but I'm really liking the book so far as always with all the wallflower novels this one is about our youngest wallflower I think she's the youngest her name is Daisy she is Lillian's little sister and she has all grown up now her father wants her to marry his employee but then both of them don't like each other and both of them don't want to marry each other because both of them want to have the freedom to choose but the thing is is that they're like 
telling themselves, yeah, they want like the choice. They want a choice in life. They want a choice on what who what to do with the rest of their lives, and they want to make that choice themselves. But they're like so attracted to each other, and the chemistry is just off the charts. But they're just so confused about their feelings towards each other. So it's really fun to see them interact and to kind of like always just find each other in the most random places like they always just bump into each other it's amazing i love it so much but anyways i'm here to show you that i bought the complete set of the wallflowers but with the new covers like the new ish cover i've always had my eye on these just never bought them because i told myself i don't need duplicate copies of the same book for like different covers like i don't need them and plus i never read the wallflowers in, in its entirety like right now so i just never found like the reason but then now that i'm reading them and now that i'm almost done the quartet i'm like i have to get it with the new covers like i just have to like i deserve it so two of the books were pretty cheap like two of them were eight dollars and then the other books were like twelve dollars i don't know why like each book cost is different it's so bizarre here but i was excited that it didn't cost me much to get the whole set i think it only cost me like probably like forty dollars in the end um i also stopped ebay shopping for a very long time because i didn't need more historical romances but i kept my eye out on some particular covers some particular editions and i found myself a lorraine heath blot i always wanted this book with this step back and i found a lot selling for cheap for this one so this one's called never love of cowboy and i think a lot of my friends actually really enjoyed that book and then I think there's like another book in the series. I don't, I'm not sure if this is a book in the series, but it's called Never Marry a Cowboy. I, I think I have this one already, but I'm not too sure. Very gorgeous back cover. And then the set had a hard back. And then this one's a uh, rogue in Texas. And then the back is like this. It's so pretty. Anyway, so that cost me probably like $30 for all three books plus shipping. So that was kind of expensive. And then I decided to treat myself today. I don't have it with me physically yet because it's um, still being shipped, but I bought the first edition of Dancing at Midnight and I'm gonna put the cover here. Gorgeous, loved it so much. I had to get it. I was debating whether or not I wanted it for a long, long time. But then after this week, I was like, I deserve to get this book. And I paid, I paid $95 for it. I know it's expensive. It's a lot of money. I wouldn't typically spend this much money on a book like this unless it was like a special edition from Illumicrate or like Afterlight or like with those book subscription services that are very, very rare. I wouldn't spend this much money on like just a vintage novel, but I wanted it so badly and it's really hard to find and I just wanted to complete my set. Anyways, that's my reading update. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna continue reading Scandal in Spring today. I don't think I will. I'm like pretty much brain dead inside. Like there's nothing left of me in this brain right now. But I also have to get started on a Mary Below book because Rachel and I host the Blushing Blue Stocking Historical Romance Book Club each month and tomorrow, Saturday at 7 p.m., which will be long past when I post this um I'm hosting the live show on my channel and I haven't read the book yet it is Saturday morning I just started slightly married by Mary below and I am 30 something percent in it's okay it's about our hero who marries his colleague's sister because as his colleague's dying wish on the battlefield um he was like, I'll protect your sister. So then now in order to protect his sister, he had to marry her because she was going to lose like her title and her fortune and everything without like the marriage. So then they got married and that's 30% of the book right now. Um, it's definitely not like The Wallflowers by Lisa Cleopas. Uh, so I don't have high hopes for it just from like the start of the book. It's kind of going really slow it's dragging a little bit and i'm pretty sure i'm going to talk more about it on the live show but i'll give you my thoughts on it too so far right now sitting on three or five stars i want to like give it a chance because right now the ratings on goodreads is like eighteen thousand ratings and it's a 3.94 which is like really high for me and then a lot of my friends who read historical romance like crystal from crystal's bookish life i think she read this series too and I heard from a friend that she really liked it. So maybe I'll like it towards the end and the end of the book will 
win me over. It's pouring rain outside right now and I need to go for my morning walk. But I don't want to go outside when it's raining because I don't particularly want to wear rain boots today and carry an umbrella for our morning walk. So I'm just going to go downstairs on the treadmill. I'm just going to walk for three minutes. So I came back from the mall and I only bought two things, but I spent a lot of money on food and lunch for my family because I felt bad that I was eating something good so I just bought lunch for them. Anyways, the two things I got was a book. I got The Unspoken Truths for Career Success by Tessa White and she is known as the job doctor. It says navigating pay, promotions, and power at work and I think like the one thing that kind of caught my attention of why I wanted to read this self-help book was because I wanted to learn more about the truth about burnout and you know like how I can not burn out and then also the truth about office politics and power is always interesting to me too as well anyways I also bought a pair of shorts this one's from Zara not sure if I want to keep it or not it looks nice but I feel like maybe if I can get a bigger size it'll look cuter but then also at the same time I'm a lazy person and I don't like going back to the store to return things forgot to tell you guys I finished reading slightly married by Mary below like maybe four or five hours ahead of the live show. I'm so excited that I got to finish it. Honestly, that book was, <laughs> it was good, but then also at the same time, I felt like it was really slow, like nothing was happening for a long time. I felt like most of the book was about her getting like set up for society because she was like a coal miner's daughter. There wasn't like crazy villains or there wasn't like a crazy like plot. There wasn't even a crazy problem. So yeah, it was okay. But anyways, I'm gonna go back to listening to Scandal in Spring by Lisa Klepez while I do some online shopping. Hello, okay, so I wanted to come back here to conclude this reading vlog because I did manage to finish Scandal in Spring. It took me so many days. It took me like probably four days to read this book and I'll go more into detail about like why it took me four days later, but I just wanted to say that I have some makeup on because I had to film an announcement video for a historical romance readathon that I am co-hosting with like 10 other booktubers or nine other booktubers, 10 including me. And it's going to take place in August. The video announcement will be released on July 5th. So keep an eye out for that video because it's super fun. It's completely different from all the other readathons that I have ever participated in. And I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I also want everybody to kind of get excited about this readathon because I am. Um, it is not me who created the readathon. I was just asked to participate in it, but as a co-host. But back to Scandal in Spring. Okay, so the reason why it took me four days to finish the book is not because the book wasn't good. It was mostly because my life was not good. Like I just was super busy. Like I said in my previous clips, I was like, like too concentrated and focused on work to give my full attention to Scandal and Spray, which I feel like was kind of detrimental to my enjoyment of the book because I felt like if I had read the book in one sitting, if I had more time dedicated to the book, I would have given this book maybe like a higher rating than I did. But all to say, I still really enjoyed the book and I gave this book a four out of five stars. Like I still really loved our characters. I love Daisy and I love our hero who was just very reluctant to give in to his feelings for Daisy. But this is a classic case of hero falls first, but hero fell first, but hero also didn't know that he fell first, which was like interesting in a way. I really liked our hero I felt like he was such a sweet boy because you know he comes off as I don't want anything to do with her but then I also want the best for her like I am going to try to set her up with like the best man possible even if it kills me because I'm so insanely jealous of anybody who comes close to her and then meanwhile she is like I don't understand why you're being so dumb like I clearly like you why can't we just explore these options together and then there's like a reason why he doesn't want to and then we find out the reason why but the reason why happens so late in the book like i think like 80 percent of the book 
in is when we finally realized like what his big scandal is which i felt like it took too long for us to get there and therefore it lessened the impact of the scandal like i just felt like it was rushed i didn't feel like it was properly developed i didn't have that sense of urgency because the scandal was like known in the very last bit of the book already and i knew there was going to be a happily ever after i just knew it so i was just kind of like all right let's wrap this up so i can get to my happily ever after but anyway I like the book. I enjoy it. It's not my favorite out of the Wallflower series. I think the favorite will have to be tied between It Happened One Autumn and then um, Devil in Winter and then it's Scandal in Spring and then it's Secrets of a Summer Night. So I was talking to Rachel about Secrets of a Summer Night yesterday during our live show and I mentioned to her that Secrets of a Summer Night was not my favorite and I felt like maybe it was because I was listening to the audiobook too quickly. I wasn't really paying attention to the book but then she reassured me that it's not one of the strongest books in the Wallflower series. It was kind of boring. And she also gave it a three out of five stars, which I find shocking and surprising because usually we are sometimes on like different sides of the rating, but then our book club has proven to us that we can agree on ratings because there are so many books that we picked so far during our book club that we ran for probably like half a year now where we actually agreed on the rating and we're very shocked and very surprised. So I'm also very shocked and surprised that we agree on a book that wasn't our book club pick. And yeah, so she definitely made me feel a lot better that Secrets of the Summer Night was not the best book. So we also picked our next book for the July book club pick which is again the magic which is wallflowers number zero it's like the prequel to the wallflowers i wasn't going to read this book but then um i heard that this book was really really good and it was some of like people's favorites from the wallflower series if they can count this as a wallflowers book but our live show is going to be on july 22nd at 8 p.m eastern standard time and it's going to be on rachel's channel um and so more details to come but always check out my instagram page because i post like the ig graphics there and i post my updates there as well and then obviously with the historical romance readathon that i'm doing with the 10 other booktubers i'm going to be updating my instagram story as quickly as possible too as well with more information and details and insights right now i'm listening to megan frampton's new book which is called his study in scandal or something basically it's like a taboo historical romance where our heroine is 12 years older than our hero and our hero is supposed to court our heroine's daughter but then our hero and our heroine both have a very strong connection they like had a one night stand and they cannot forget about each other and they are destined to be each other but then now they don't know how to kind of go around about like that taboo-ness in society because everybody and anybody is going to talk about how they shouldn't be together but i'm excited to continue reading that book i am 45 percent into the audiobook so far it's good but it's like the pacing's just a little bit too fast and i don't know how i feel about it so far but i'm excited to continue it and i'll let you guys know about my thoughts on that book in another video so keep staying tuned on my channel subscribe if you haven't already and check out vlog part number one if you haven't watched it and you just stumbled upon part two of the wallflowers reading vlog series i'm uploading but anyways i'll see you guys again next time in a new video bye